here with my August wrap-up for 2019. I read a total of 10 books, so we're splitting it up into two parts, five books this part, five books next part. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read was Strike a Poser by Dylan Edward Asher and I ended up giving this a two out of five stars. This follows a woman named Olivia who is a professional con artist. She is planning her biggest job yet to rip off the billionaire named Jerry Malor. She already has her reliable partner Jillian but she needs two more players for this job. She tracks down and recruits her ex-lover named Jack and and his younger brother Kip and they trail Jerry to an amusement park in Orlando, Florida where they plan to do their shady transaction and it's like the story of that. I found the plot and storyline very slow in this one so most of the time I was bored. I wasn't really invested in any of the characters. I didn't care what happened to them. I didn't care about their backstories. I just didn't care. The only exciting thing that happened in the book was the last 20-ish pages when the transaction actually occurred. Other than that, like I said, I was bored so personally not a fan of this one. The next book that I read was Blonde Hair Blue Eyes. This is by Karen Slaughter. This is actually the prequel to Pretty Girls. This follows a girl named Julia who is paranoid after a fellow student and a very pretty homeless woman goes missing and she's scared that she may be next. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. Like I said it is the prequel to Pretty Girls which I personally have not read yet so I think that because of that I wasn't really invested in Julia as a character. I didn't really care what happened to her. I'm pretty sure that if I had read Pretty Girls before I picked this up, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. I'm a huge fan of Karen Slaughter's writing, so I'm definitely going to be picking up Pretty Girls, and then maybe I'll come back to this and read it again and hopefully connect more with Julia. But like I said, I didn't really care about her. The next book that I have is Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows 17 year old Charlie Davis who after attempting suicide is admitted into a treatment facility and is basically the story of her trying to cope with what she's going through. The book covers a lot of very dark topics like abuse, mental illness, self-harm, suicide, things along that nature, but it's done in a very honest and brutal way. It definitely does not sugarcoat anything and I actually really enjoyed that aspect of the book. I had very mixed feelings towards Charlie as a main character at times. I felt a huge surge of sympathy towards her but then other times I was just angry with the choices that she made. I really didn't like her relationship with Riley. He was just not a nice person. I mean that was kind of the point of the story but not a fan. I just wanted to like shake her and yell at her to run away because he was just not a good person. He wasn't good for her and it drove me crazy seeing them together. I personally like the side characters a lot more than I liked the main characters. I wish that there's a spin-off series or companion novel or something that follows their stories as well. I also really liked how the story didn't end on a happily ever after note. I mean it was a hopeful ending but I really liked that it wasn't like your typical ending to these kind of stories. That was really awesome to see and I also was a huge fan of the writing style. The chapters were very short. They kind of almost felt like diary entries so I was instantly hooked and intrigued with those. I definitely recommend you guys check out this book if you're interested but definitely be aware of all the trigger warnings going into the book because there's a lot of them. The next book that I have is The Good Girl by Mary Kubica and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars as well. This follows a girl named Mia Dennett who decides to leave the bar with a stranger named Colin Thatcher one night after her on-again, off-again boyfriend fails to show up for their date. Instead of trading her off to his employers like the plan originally was, Colin ends up taking Mia to a secluded cabin in the woods. Mia's mother Eve begins a search for her daughter with the local detective named Gabe and he will stop at nothing to bring her home. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Mary Kubica's writing. I own all of her books and I usually give them a 3.5 or higher rating. I just love her thrillers so much. Right from chapter one, I was immediately intrigued with Mia and Colin and why Colin changed his opinion of Mia, why he ended up helping her instead of selling her to his employers. I was just so invested in this story. I really liked how the story wasn't just told from Mia's perspective. It also had perspectives from Colin, Gabe, and Mia's mother. I just think that that made it an all-around better story. I really 
really like the alternating timelines in this book. There were flashbacks from when Mia and Colin first met, there were flashbacks from when Mia and Colin were in the cabin, and then there was also the ongoing investigation and what was happening with that. It made it so much more entertaining in my opinion. I did only give it a 4 out of 5 stars because there were some aspects of the story that were predictable and it did feel a little bit drawn out. I think that it could be shorter and still get the same message across, but overall I still really enjoyed it, so 4 out of 5. The last book that I'm going to talk about in this part one of the wrap-up is Mistress of All Evil by Serena Valentino and I gave this a, a 2.5 out of 5 stars and this is like the Maleficent origin story. I wanted to like this so much more than I did because I am a huge fan of Maleficent. Disney villains just make me so happy but I was extremely let down by this. I don't know if it's because this is the fourth book in the series and I haven't read the first three. I assumed that you could just pick them up individually since they're the origin stories of each villain. But they did mention parts from the first three books in this, so I'm not 100% sure if that kind of made my experience less for this book. I did like learning about the different reasons why Maleficent turned out the way she did, but I wasn't enthralled with the story. I didn't really care that much about it, so like I said, 2.5 out of 5 stars. I can't decide if I want to pick up the first three books of this series. I believe there's six all together so I don't know if I find them in the thrift store maybe I'll pick them up if not whatever. Alright guys so that was my wrap up part one for August 2019. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them and check out part two when it's up. I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye! <laughs>